call Ms. Paula Bradley to conclude and wind up the debate. On the motion. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I, I should have said this is your maiden speech, so we'll have no interruptions from other members. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I also welcome the opportunity to make my maiden speech to this House today and thank the people of North Belfast for placing their trust in me also. My colleague Pam Lewis began her speech today by stating by the time that this debate draws to an end, three victims will have suffered at the hands of domestic abuse in Northern Ireland. She also stated it gave her no joy to bring this to the attention of the members of this House. While I agree with the member that bringing this motion forward today gives us no joy, I am truly delighted that I can use this short time to raise the seriousness of domestic abuse and the crippling effect it has upon our country. On International Women's Day last year, I listened to a radio debate highlighting the suppression of women in other parts of the world. I was told by this very worthy panel how very fortunate I am in Northern Ireland. We have freedom of speech, freedom to marry who we choose, freedom to dress how we want, freedom to vote, and even freedom to achieve success in all aspects of our life. Yet, Mr Deputy Speaker, there are one in four of us that are suppressed, controlled and bullied and live in fear daily of what lies ahead. That statistically is five women from this chamber and countless others within the grounds of this estate. One in four women in this country before the end of this day will have been beaten or raped or starved or made to feel totally worthless. As Basil McRae highlighted earlier, domestic abuse is much more than violence. It has also been touched upon today by many members the effect this is having on our country and our economy. This issue has the power to affect almost every department within this Assembly. It affects the children this afternoon sitting in classrooms, thinking about their mother's tears at best as she kissed them goodbye this morning with swollen lips, and the teachers dealing with those children's emotions, or the small business that is struggling to stay afloat with a member of staff whose absences are becoming more frequent through no fault of their own, or the police officer that is called to a scene of an attack, an overdose, or possibly even a death. The overstretched benefit system where a victim is unable to work due to physical or mental scarring, and a health service filled with many allied health professionals that feel powerless due to time constraints imposed upon them when dealing with bed turnover. Mrs Kelly spoke earlier about a and &E departments and the need for more training uh, for when, whenever these women present. I also, as the Minister knows, have a background in social work, and mine is in hospital social work. So I would have to say that a and &E is not always the most appropriate place. a and &E is, is always the place where, or is the, place where the perpetrator uh, will be there, playing the loving partner and holding the hand. If the victim is fortunate or unfortunate enough to have sustained injuries and admitted to a ward, this is when the victim will feel safe and able to disclose their circumstances. At this stage, I want to pay tribute to those nurses and allied health professionals for their compassion and continued support for all the victims that pass through their, day, their doors daily. Safe Places has also been mentioned here this morning or this afternoon. I also had the pleasure, when I was mayor of Newton Abbey, of being part of the Safe Places campaign, which, lost, which launched across Antrim, Ballymena, Carrick, Fergus, Larne, and Newton Abbey. Indeed, I am very proud to say Newton Abbey Borough Council was the first council to introduce a domestic violence workplace charter, and Ballyclare was made the first safe time. Through the commitment of the council and businesses, I myself over the years. As a business owner, over the year as a business owner, have also made my business a safe place. The Minister stated his ongoing commitment in making this a priority, and I know the Minister of Justice has shown his commitment to the Safe Places campaign by displaying the logo and making his constituency office a safe place. And for that I thank you. While this debate has been cohesive and members from across this chamber have shown their support for both women and men suffering from domestic abuse, I would ask members to pledge their support in making their constituency offices also safe places. By placing the logo in their window and having the information available for these victims to get the help they need before it is too late. 
Just before I came into the chamber today, I received an email from Women's Aid. They thanked me for bringing this motion here to the House, and we have, have a wonderful medium here to highlight the plight of these victims. When I was preparing for this speech uh, this morning, I thought about how I felt and about how nervous I would be, and that that is nothing. I just thought again, this is nothing compared to how that man or woman is feeling at this time. There will be many people watching this at home and in the building. And if by this debate today we have empowered some woman or man to break this cycle by knowing that this assembly is prepared to keep this at the forefront, then both Pam and myself will have made a great achievement today. Mr Deputy Speaker, I wish to thank the members of this House for their support today and starting this assembly term in such a practical and positive manner. Yeah. Yeah.